Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today I have with me former law justice and commerce minister Dr. Subramanian Swami. Currently he's a Rajya Sabha member and we're going to hear from him his recollections on what happened in the Kashmir Valley uh, between the years 1988 and 1992. I picked these four years because it kind of bookends the actual event that happened on 1990 and uh, Dr. Swami became a member of Rajya Sabha from Uttar Pradesh in 1988. So let's welcome our guest of the evening, Dr. Subramanian Swami. Dr. Swami, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel, sir. Sir, you are muted. Uh, oh, okay. I am. No, now you're good. Now you're good. Now you're good, sir. Now you're good. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, um, uh, Shri Ayer. <clears throat> you're doing a great job. Uh, on these uh, programs uh, and it's now widely discussed and many people refer to me as if I don't know you. Uh, so uh, <laughs> today, they'll be, today they will know that I know you also. <clears throat> what um, I think you have done a very smart thing by in this very last topic to confine to these four formative years in what is happening in Kashmir today or happening 10 years ago, uh, or ever since 1992. In uh, between, um, I would say 1971 and 1988, Kashmir was by and large very peaceful place. Why? First of all, the defeat of the Pakistani forces and the arrest of a hundred thousand soldiers in the Bangladesh war had completely demoralized the uh, militant community of Muslims that, you know, they, was, they used to think they are some super, uh, you know, super fighters and the Hindus are incapable of fighting and all that. And the whole thing shattered because I'm an eyewitness of that period. And no, I just become a member of parliament in 1974. And uh, during the entire 70s and uh, 80s, I, I found that, you know, there was no question, no talk of Kashmir being a separate country, except by liberals, uh, left wing congressmen, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, a, a reference. Let me first, uh, before I get into this 1988-92 uh, insurgency, as I mildly put it, let me tell you a few facts which you must remember and our people must remember. Article 370 uh, uh, was never considered during the entire uh, Constituent Assembly proceedings from 1946 onwards till the last week before its finalization. The date of finalization was November 26th, 19, that's 1949. And uh, on uh, January 26, 1950, we officially made it our constitution, declared India as a Republic. Now, at uh, in the middle of December, <clears throat> the middle of November, ten days before the fine, Sheikh Abdullah came to see Dr. Ambedkar. Dr. Ambedkar was the chairman of the drafting committee of the Constitution. J Rajendra Prasad was the president of the Constituent Assembly. And Sardar Patel was the chairman of the Fundamental Rights Committee. And there were others, you know, B. N. Rao and so on. But these were the three principal people. And as far as Ambedkar was concerned, right from day one, he moved every amendment, discussions, and then either accepted them or rejected them. And he had become a kind of a legend by in the middle of November. So when Sheikh Abdullah came and he said that Jawaharlal Nehru has asked me to speak to you and speak to you to say that 
uh, in view of the recent uh, United Nations resolutions and so on, this is now 1949, uh, Nehru had taken the Kashmir issue to, uh, to the UN. He said, in view of that, uh, a temporary resolution can be brought for saying that Kashmir is not a part of India. Or there is a dispute which has to be settled before Kashmir can be included in the, uh, in the list of states. So therefore, uh, I, I, I'm requesting you to move this amendment. So uh, Ambedkar said, I am not a traitor. I will never move something so ridiculous as Article 370. All these left-wing people who have gone praising Ambedkar, why don't they quote this sometimes? And he said, if I am forced, I will just quit and walk out. Then Sardar Patel came uh, to at the behest of Nehru and tried to convince Ambedkar. He said no. Then Sardar Patel said, will you be offended if I, for this one purpose, bring somebody else to move the amendment? So Gopal Sami Ayengar, whose uh, son was G. Parthasarthi, uh, Gopal Sami Ayengar was also, I think, regent in Kashmir. He was asked to move the resolution. And when the resolution was moved, there was an uproar. Now I'm mentioning all this because these people talk about Kashmir being a separate entity, such an entity. When was it a separate entity? I would like to challenge and ask people to prove it. When was it legally stated to be a separate identity whose status has not been decided? So, um, uh, uh, this, um, um, uh, uh, when Gopal Sami Ayinga moved it, there was an uproar. All the 500 kings who had merged their kingdoms into India, so that India doesn't look as a country of potholes, you see of independent uh, 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 countries. Sardar Patel's huge work uh, merging it. And at that time to bring in this, they brought in this uh, uh, concept that it's Kashmir's uh, final status has not been decided. And this uproar could only be uh, silenced when Sardar Patel himself came on on the microphone and said, uh, this is a temporary matter. As soon as the UN decides, UN is going to decide very soon. They have already decided Pakistan is the aggressor and they should be saying they are bringing out a resolution. And after that, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this article will be wiped out. Now, the UN, of course, never uh, brings closure on anything. So it continued. They laid down three conditions. First condition was on Pakistan to withdraw its uh, troops and irregulars. They didn't do it. And so the second and third couldn't be implemented. The third one, third part of the UN Secretary Council resolution was plebiscite would be held in Kashmir. But we couldn't proceed to that because the first was not clear. And it was made clear that the first two are precedents for plebiscite. Otherwise, plebiscite cannot be held. So it was a, now it's a dead as a dodo, that resolution. And however, in the meantime, the resolution that was passed was not only Article 370, but it was many other parts in it, including that the resolution can be deleted by the president of India by his signature without a parliament vote, provided the, uh, uh, um, the uh, uh, and it was a, 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 the Kashmir's uh, a constituent assembly, provided a vote of the Kashmir Jammu and Kashmir Constituent Assembly permission is taken. That is the overall thing. Um, uh, Constituent Assembly can uh, delete it. Uh, I mean, even if it is over, the president can delete it 
provided the jammu kashmir um uh, you know constituent assembly uh, permission is taken now that was not taken in 1957 the jammu kashmir uh, resolution uh, the jammu kashmir um, constituent assembly was bound up because a separate jammu kashmir constitution was prepared and what does a separate constitution of jammu kashmir which all these uh, um, leaders of, uh, of jammu kashmir who are not uh, who are not uh, hindus they keep on quoting of course left wing hindus also quote it oh no there is a there was a jammu kashmir uh, constitution what does that constitution say it says that Jammu Kashmir is an integral part of India. That's in the preamble. And then, of course, everything about sharing of uh, uh, you know of, um, uh, of provinces or uh, districts, all these other things are there. So even the resolution which was passed specially for Jammu and Kashmir for a temporary uh, on a basis of a temporary Article Three Seventy. concluded that i mean it was concluded and finalized and the constitution was placed before the assembly of the jammu kashmir which said that the jammu state of jammu kashmir is an integral part of india now in this context whatever uh, agitation has taken place is actually anti national even by the jammu kashmir constitution whatever questions of being raised raising of the un uh, plebiscite is rubbish because pakistan didn't implement the mandatory first and second conditions and now so many years have passed by it has become uh, has become uh, a dodo so in 1988 the first step that was taken after years of peace why because bangladesh shattered the the courage of all the militants in kashmir and we didn't have anything it's all peaceful i have been many times to kashmir during that period just like any other part of india and the tra- the all the tra- boatmen traders shopkeepers everybody all muslims were thrilled because of the business that they were that was coming so in 1998 1988 Farooq Abdullah done for which he says you can hang me if i'm guilty i want to hang you but i certainly think you need a long tenure in the jail or you must apologize because we didn't jail you then so time by if you can leave rajiv gandhi's uh, killers <laughs> after after so many years and say no no now you have suffered enough now you can go then i think as the supreme court will also let him go but he has to apologize what he did was <clears throat> he released all the terrorists who came from pakistan and were put caught and put in jail he released them all to go into the public domain and then in 19 uh, 1989 90 individual assassinations began to take place i don't have to give you the list of who was killed whether he was a judge or whether he was a government servant or he was a professor or one by one then the increasing number of rapes so um um uh, in uh, 89 uh the worst turn turn of events took place when vp singh became prime minister supported by the bjp cpm cpi and uh, people used to popularly call it the three legged uh, three legged government uh, that uh, that time <clears throat> the home ministry was given to mufti said who was the um, uh, uh, father of mehbooba who became chief minister of bjp supported government the bjp is been in the long uh, wrong places on kashmir and they also have an explanation why did you do this 
and uh, and did you did you succeed no you didn't succeed you failed but anyway going back uh atal bihari vajpayee was the nominee who sat in the uh, committee which um, ran the viewers committee. we seem to have momentarily lost connection with dr swami and he'll be rejoining yes sir please continue sir yeah uh so um i hope there is no cyber uh, warfare from pakistan <laughs> no no so you are talking about atal bihari vajpayee sir i atal bihari vajpayee supported this government and this government then went systematically to through mohammad said uh, uh mufti said to strengthen the um uh, extremists in kashmir one step that was taken in uh, 1989 was the kidnapping by the jklf of um, uh, uh, of the daughter one of the daughters i mean now i don't know where she has disappeared so she is in uh, chennai i believe sir acha <laughs> okay same place <laughs> <laughs> so she is uh, one of the biggest dealership owners in chennai of cars oh, and don't don't, don't ask me how she got that much money but she is <laughs> okay so uh i didn't know thanks for telling me this but that daughter uh i i got her name somewhere nahida rubaiya i think no no ah rubaiya rubaiya nahida was of the uh, souls yeah. uh rubaiya said she was kidnapped now there are lots of kind of loose uh, conspiracy theories floating around i won't get into that we just what we know for sure and uh, eight of the most notorious terrorists in central jails were released by uh, mufti said in exchange so, for for so that she could be released now at that time when uh, i i i had just uh, you know i had in 1984 or 85 early 85 mrs gandhi's uh, after mrs gandhi's assassination the lok sabha results came out they were held by the end of 84 but uh, 19 uh, the results came out in uh, the first week of january of 1985 all of us lost i also lost that wave because mrs gandhi was assassinated and rajiv gandhi got 420 or 425 seats a historic thing to even which jawalal nehru didn't get and i decided to go back to harvard and start teaching i uh, taught there as a visiting professor for two years and then i came back as soon as i came back uh, charan singh who was very ill and passed away uh, a little uh, after i returned and i had met him in america he was very keen that i uh, bond with his son who he said was inexperienced but american educated and uh, whether i would agree to come as a member of the rajya sabha so i was still janata party although chandrasekhar had expelled me in 1982 for saying that he had uh, bribed some mlas to get some uh, rajya sabha mps elected uh but chandrasekhar then apologized in 1986 after i returned from harvard to say that you know i was foolish and made a mistake less uh, you joined janata so i was became general secretary of janata so we i got uh, charan singh's uh, leftover by, to his son party which had 54 mlas to merge with janata party why i am telling you this is we became a force then vp singh arrived on the scene and uh, mr ramkrishna ekde and a whole lot of other forces they all may, wanted us to join uh, janata dal i opposed it and finally it turned out that except <laughs> deva gowda and myself everybody else joined vp singh and so elections took place after five years were completed of rajiv gandhi and vp singh and this conglomerate
came to power. And at that time, Mufti Sahid's this happened. And eight notorious people convicted were released from jail. Uh, after sir, that, one question, sir. Sir, one question, sir. One question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when Farooq Abdullah released those 70 deadly terrorists from jail, yes. didn't anybody from the center of from, uh, from the Jammu, Jammu, No, from Jammu from, Kashmir. Jail. From Jammu Kashmir, yeah, yeah. Uh, not from the central jail. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, sir, what I'm saying is there are two situations I'm uh, trying yeah. to contrast, sir. In uh. the first case, when Farooq Abdullah released, did the center object? Because I believe that Farooq Abdullah objected to the release of eight. Well, Farooq Abdullah, you know, he could have stopped, he could have refused. I said, yeah, he objected to the eight in. Uh, yeah, in, yeah. Because they, they, they were all totally personally against uh, Farooq Abdullah. But he didn't, uh, he released a lot of people in uh, Kashmir before that. He released the, the, the first release. This release was to save the daughter. It was an exchange of the daughter uh, of Mufti, Mufti Said. Is that the answer to your question? Y yes, sir. But it was one of the staged kidnappings. It was a sham. No, no, no. no, no listen, that's going too far. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Undocumented. But okay. if you ask, if you ask me after the program is over, were you right? I'll say yes, you're right. So I'm saying it on the program that I'll say. <laughs> okay, sir. In, in in my opinion, I'll 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 say in my opinion it was that. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, well taken per opinion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was to see that that those eight are released, and they were the most vicious bunch. Who had done a number of killings, and half of them were Pakistanis. So then they went to Kashmir. Now the problem got compounded. And in, uh, this happened in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, 1989 uh, and 90. I mean, the end of 89, this kind of thing took place. Then by the time they went, it was early 90. And in early 90, when the individual assassinations and all that began to take place, some judge, some lawyer and all that, these all are very well documented. I don't want to repeat that here. But uh, very soon, uh, very soon, the matter began to snowball. It is at that stage, Rajiv Gandhi, who has been, had been my friend throughout uh, from the 1980s, um, he contacted me and he said, you know, uh, I had 200, I, Rajiv Gandhi had won 220 seats and he didn't stake a claim to form a government. So V.P. Singh was able to form the government. So he says, now I think, uh, I think this government uh, doesn't deserve to continue if this is the situation. Uh, will you please, uh, knowing your skills, bring down this government? <laughs> <laughs> so, I said, I can't do it to make you prime minister because people misunderstand. And I'm essentially a man who has been friendly with Congress uh, whenever possible. Uh, but, uh, and I'm friendly with you, but I have never been a member of Congress and I'll never be a member of Congress. Because Parmacharya told me at the very beginning, Ni wana poda, ana Congress la poda de. Translated <laughs> means go anywhere, but don't join Congress. And I followed this even though I'm, I later on, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, our uh, Narsimha yes, Rao, had, uh, he wanted me in. He said, I'll give you the best uh, 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 portfolio. I want you around because I see how you can. And he was not at that time a majority. He was short of majority. So he tenuous said, know, majority. Yeah, not even tenuous. He was short by about 40. And, but he was the single largest. So uh, so he said, I, you you will construct a majority for me. And that's why I want you in. But uh, because of Parmachari, I told him, no, no. So he created a, uh, that is after Chandrasekhar's uh, government, he came and he created um, uh, this. Um, there was an election. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. And then... He created this uh, um, uh, 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 Congress government, but in a minority, 
and with his super skills for some months at least he was able to get enough votes to get majority in votes now in um, uh, the in 1991 um, the um, I had uh, I mean we had done a lot of things. We, we Chandrasekhar and I literally ran the government. I was senior most in the warrant of precedence. So there was Chandrasekhar as prime minister, then Devi Lal as uh, deputy prime minister, who never attended cabinet meeting because he said everything is in English, and I can't read any of it. So I will not come unless there's something special for me. And so they were basically in the cabinet committee on political affairs. There were uh, Modi, uh, it was uh, Chandrasekhar and I who were dominating the show. There all these civil servants, uh, army chiefs, and so on. The cabinet committee on political affairs is the most important one, it's more important than the cabinet. But anyway, in that, that issue came one day that uh, Saifuddin Soz, who was that time member of the Sheikh Abdullah party, his daughter has been kidnapped. And her name, as I was about to mention, was Naheda uh, Imtiaz. And uh, that time, uh, of course, Saifuddin Soz was um, a member of parliament from Kashmir. And also he was um, in uh, Farooq Abdullah's party. And for, uh, he was in tears and, uh, you know, there was, uh, uh, in fact, he was very... Uh, uh, demonstrative also used to roll on the on the on thing, and Rajiv Gandhi, who had supported uh, Chandrasekhar's government, uh, he told me, "Please, Swami, do something about it." So the matter came to Cabinet Committee on Political Affairs. So Chandrasekhar said, "I will go my way. You go your way. Let's see if we can get it." So I said, "Is there any minimum condition?" He, so he said, "No one will be released." So I said, then I am ready to join with you on this. I said, no one will be released. They had asked for five. We said, nothing doing. They were the same JKLF. So Chandrasekhar went through the political process, which I'll explain separately. I went through another process, contacting a favorite country of mine in, uh, in the Western direction. I won't name the country. <laughs> They are very good in fighting there. It yeah. also starts with the same letter as India. <laughs> <laughs> I, if, I, if, you, if I have two minutes uh, digression, please, I will sir. tell you. Please, you see, please. go ahead, sir. When I become minister, this uh, uh, WTO was being uh, was it was a major project that was being considered. So I was asked to immediately become uh, economist and commerce minister. <laughs> So I went there and uh, uh, the Israeli deputy prime minister was there. So uh, he asked me, shall we have uh, sit together for today's dinner? So I, I said, yes, but where? He said, no, you know, there's going to be a special dinner and uh, I'd like to sit with you and have a discussion. You're an old friend of Israel and I'm great pleased. And I got a message also that don't come back without meeting him. So we sat and uh, discussed and all that. When I came back to India, can you believe Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee and Mr. Jaswant Singh moved a resolution that I should be removed from the cabinet because I had dinner sitting side by side with, <laughs> with the Israelis. Imagine this party. I mean, where, what did I come to? Uh, because Jansang had always been for uh, Israel. So I, I'm just telling you the difficulty. And for seven days, they didn't let parliament run. Finally, Chandrasekhar asked me, is they, you know, they are not going to, is there any way? Why you sat with them? Can you tell them? So I said, you just, you tell them that he had no choice because India is with I. Because you just now said uh, about Israel having the same... And Israel also is I, so naturally they will sit together. And on that, the whole thing fizzled out. But they didn't realize that after India comes Indonesia, <laughs> not Israel. And then Iran, Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> Duffers. <laughs> so anyway, 
uh, coming back to the thing, you see, the we got this information. So I, I my track was to go through a friend, friendly country. And because we came to learn that the JKLF had done the, uh, the youth wing of it had done the, uh, the kidnapping. So um, uh, my, my approach was, not, since we are not going to leave anybody, we are going to make it very tough for them. So our RAW agents went to, uh, to uh, or whether RAW agent or we have a special force, task force which we don't publicize. They went to London and with the help of this friendly country met the exiled JKLF uh, vice president, uh, general secretary and treasurer in three different cities and told them that if this girl is not let free, then uh, you are going to be in trouble here. And, uh, um, and the Israelis were very cooperative. Uh, they didn't send anybody official, but they sent somebody who looked like an Israeli. And they said that, uh, don't go to the British police because we Jews control <laughs> the British police. So these guys got so frightened, they sent the message home. Meantime, um, Chandrasekhar called up Nawaz Sharif, who was then the Prime Minister. He was in Beijing. And Chandrasekhar government was trying to improve relations with Beijing. So I had been sent two weeks before this incident to Beijing to sign the uh, Indo-China or China-India uh, trade agreement, which the Chinese had been refusing for almost 10 years with the Congress government. So we signed it and there was a lot of bon homie between China and India. And they also always knew that I know I speak Chinese, I've written books on China, I'm friendly to all that. So uh, the Chinese also were supportive. So Nawaz Sharif, whose brother is now going to become the new prime minister, he sent a message to, uh, uh, to Pakistan, which was intercepted by our raw chaps, in which he said, get hold of those rascals. I will not use the Urdu words for it. They are quite graphic. And tell them to release that girl. And can you believe it? The next day, uh, one fellow of the JKLF took this girl in an auto rickshaw and left her at the residence of Saifuddin Soz, who is still alive, you can ask him. Not a scratch on her. Then Chandrasekhar said, Chandrasekhar, that was a very large matter. He said, Kuch to de So there was an old man who was, had no charges against him, but was a tutor of these uh, JKLF in some madrasa. So he, he was uh, supposed to be prosecuted, but he had been in uh, hospital. So we released him. And without without a single commitment or anything, he did it completely different from what VP Singh did. So the message is, if you ever see anybody getting becoming a terrorist, get tough with him. There is no, no way to talk to terrorists. I'm totally against any policy of any government, including Muslim uh, Modi's. And I was damn against, as you, you must know, if you go through old paper cuttings, I was very much against her making Mehbubha the chief minister. She has I tremendous. That, yeah. 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 So yeah. Uh, that brings us to this um, uh, related long topic. And I mean, I'm not going to go into it, but this Kashmiri pundits was targeted for a religious cleansing policy of these very people whom Mufti Muhammad Said had released. They mastered it, masterminded it, and so on. And that is the worst thing that could happen after having driven away the Mughals from India and the British from India. It's a shame on us Indians that 
Kashmiri pandits who are scholars, who are lawyers, who are teachers, who are uh, you know businessmen, they and their wives should be treated the way they were, and finally driven out out of the state, and they have to fend for themselves because no government till we came even thought about them. We haven't thought enough about them. We have not done what we promised, but we are much better than any previous government. So. Today, uh, this issue can be traced to the appeasement policies of the past. Otherwise, this Kashmiri Pandit policy problem would not have been there. This cinema would have now of Kashmir files or whatever it's called would not have been necessary. They are the original. My mother used to say that our Gotra is, uh, is Kashyapa, so Kashmir belongs to us because Rishi Kashyapa created Kashmir. So that is the kind of attachment. The Shankaracharya's, uh, uh, you know, uh, ashram is there, which is in uh, in POK, and the, Shankar, the Shankaracharya hill, as it's called, is there. So all this put together, uh, weakness in front of uh, of terrorists, whether they are Hindus, Muslims, Christian terrorists, they have to be dealt with a very strong hand, and the Kashmiri pundits as an example of our state's virility, they must be brought back. And if necessary, for at least the first five years, we should move 100,000 ex-servicemen and settle them in Kashmir. And they should look after these people that no harm comes to them. Thank you so, very much, Dr. Swami. I just want to add a couple of uh, points to what you said. First off, viewers, about four weeks ago, I had predicted that Sheba Shari is going to be the next Prime Minister of uh, Pakistan. I'm sorry. I was going to say something else. He's. I predicted this in a show four weeks ago. Sir, I have been doing some funny stuff with Pakistan politics. It's always fun to talk about them. Um, on, on, a, on a humorous note, uh, Saifuddin So's son and I had a debate on NewsX one day where I bet one dinner with him that Rahul Gandhi is going to contest in two places in 2019. This was before the 2019 election. And he swore, no way, he's going to only contest from one place and he's going to win from there. Yes, we know what happened after that. <laughs> Mr. Salman Soz, I think his name is, you owe me a dinner. You don't have to host me for that, but I'll keep telling this once in a while. So you have to take that part just for fun. Um, <laughs> sir, um, so you you were in power for about six months and then caretaker seven, for seven, three months. Seven, seven months, yeah. Seven months. Yeah. And so in, in that time, beyond retrieving uh, Soz's daughter, was there anything else you could do on a fundamental level? Was Jagmohan still the governor at that time, sir? I think he was. Uh, but, but you see, there were no problems uh, during our time after that. You I see. Me one incident, uh, and we would have gone to action immediately. And I'll tell you one thing. There was a, a cabinet committee on political affairs meeting on, on Republic Day, what we should do in Kashmir. 1990. 1991. 1991, January. Okay. And uh, most of the officers suggested that uh, the flag hoisting should not take place in Kashmir. It will provoke the people. And then uh, only I was present, and uh, I mean, besides uh, Chandrasekhar, uh, Devilal was not there, and the other, whoever minister was to be there, was not there. So he asked me, I said, What do you mean? It's a part of India. So even if there are a few people have to be killed, shot, doesn't matter, but spread the word in advance. Anybody who touches the Indian flag will be shot dead in advance. I did that when we dismissed the DMK government also. Anybody who burns a bus will be shot dead. And not only a bus was not burnt in, uh, in, in Tamil Nadu, uh, even a cycle was not burnt. And I had to rescue uh, rescue Karnanidhi from his Oliver Road house where he had put a lock in front of the door. As a <laughs> nobody there inside. But anyway, yeah, unless the state exerts that kind of virility, so to speak, that on these matters, no compromise. So a flag was hoisted for the first time after three or four years in Lal Chowk, the center of, uh, of, of Srinagar. 
And uh, since then, of course, uh, hoisting flag is no big deal. So I am saying to you today that where the problem today of the Kashmiri Pandits arises, the failure to we are not we don't want any goodwill from the, anybody. We say these are the original inhabitants. They have to be accommodated. Their houses that you snatched have to be returned. And for their uh, safety, we will uh, send our at least a hundred thousand ex servicemen, full arm, fully armed, with their families, and we'll build them houses. They will stay till the Kashmiris, Pandits, and the Muslims there can stay in peace. And for that, any price is necessary to pay because this is an insult to us that a land of Kashyapa is going to be, uh, who will stay there is going to be determined by some mad terrorists who come from Pakistan. We have to show, no, that's all over now. After the British is gone, Mughals have been defeated. There's nothing left. You want to fight? You will be losers. So be a good citizens and uh, welcome them back. Return their property. Compensate them for the loss of property. And this way, we can be, build a new India. Thank you very much, Dr. Swami. I was trying to see if there are any questions. If you have any questions, it will show up right about now. Uh, otherwise, we can... Uh, no, I think, uh, can... I think I was clear enough. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was one of those. There's one question. Mandar ah. Karnik wants to know, who planned the individual assassinations and agenda for separatism? The ISI of Pakistan. So Pakistan should be broken into four. Unless this new uh, Nawaz Sharif's son, a brother, this new guy who's coming, he uh, cooperates with us in bringing peace to Kashmir and vacates uh, as, uh, the so-called Pakistan-held Kashmir and gives it back to India. Chetan Pai wants to know, the aryan Dravidian debate is going to the next level. An attempt to portray Dalits as descendants of Africans and also encouraging them to appropriate black stereotypes. What's your view? <laughs> Ask any idiot who says that <laughs> Tamils are Africans, please get African DNA and Tamil DNA and find out whether they are the same DNA. It's absurd British propaganda which we have followed. Yes, the uh, people in South India are darker skinned than people in Kashmir. But that's because the sun is direct rays into the equator. Whereas in uh, Kashmir, it's, uh, uh, it's in a, a in inclination. So the uh, the blackening of sun rays of the skin is more easily done in uh, closer to the equator than up north. So that's the only difference. Skin color is not part of genetics. Please go read any book on genetics. It's a got to do with your pigmentation. Nowadays, you put a cream also, people become white, you see. I've seen some um, uh, DMK leaders, and suddenly they look, all of a sudden, they look much whiter than I last saw them 10 years ago. And people say very quietly, it was, he's put cream. So there, because it's pigmentation, so it can be a change. So this concept of Aryan is nonsense. There's no word Aryan anywhere in the Sanskrit literature. Arya is different. Arya applies to everybody. Anyone who is civilized is called Arya. Dravida is a regional term. Tra and Vid, which means where the three coastlines meet. That is Dravida. It is actually, it should be said, Travida. The exact pronunciation, which Shankara was the Adi Shankara was the first one to use the word Dravida. He used it with Mandana Mishra when he went to challenge him uh, for a debate in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Bihar. And he won it. And when the first question was asked, who are you? He said, I'm Dravida Shishu. So they asked, what's the meaning of Dravida? Then he explained. South India. So um, we used to have a cricketer called the, uh, Rahul Dravid. So he's a coach of the team now. He's, he's, a, coach, yeah, he's a Brahmin. 
I mean, yes. Brahmin means, I mean, he's from the same lineage. Brahmin yes, is yes, only yes. one who is Jnani, Tyagi, and Sahasi. If you have these three qualities, you are Brahmin. Otherwise, you're not a Brahmin. But he is descended from Brahmins, I can say. And, uh, but he is not a Dravida. Will they accept it? That he is a Dravida? So, I, 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 I'm, I'm saying that these are all British brainwashing that has come in our country. And it should be brainwashed out. Next question from Mandar Karnik again. How was the Kashmir terrorism controlled in the 2000s? Well, I mean, it, it was um, um, at that time, uh, Musharraf, who was there, was a, had just come in after a coup and he was ready to talk. He did take action. Uh, in, uh, he, in fact, I, uh, he and I became good friends. And at one stage, he said, all these are freelancers. How do I go and catch all of them? You catch them for me if you want. You know, that's the kind of thing. But then, you know, um, after 2005, uh, this, uh, this problem began more acute. And uh, by then, uh, you know, all this, uh, what happened in, uh, in Afghanistan and all these things, uh, they, they, have, they have created this problem. And uh, we have to be very, very tough. You don't have to be as tough as the, uh, as the Russians are in, uh, in, in Ukraine. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, I mean, that is really genocide that's going on there. But I think here... Uh, we must, our country's integrity about time, we removed all these disputes. And you see, if you, there's a way of doing it, Samadama Bedrand. Look at uh, Sri Lanka. What I've been suggesting ultimately was done. Not because of me, but because there, there are none of other options. And see how much difference has come. So we must know how to deal with our enemies. Where they get nasty, be tough. Where they are nice, be generous. Then don't lecture them, do like this, do like that. The, the, our Jai Shankar was to go on giving lectures on Tamil. So what the hell is God, that got to do with us? They are citizens of Sri Lanka. So therefore, if you want uh, a secure South Asia, uh, follow this policy. You got the strength, you got the large, uh, large size for a country. And um, uh, on that basis, you can always uh, lead to that. And this is the last question for today, Dr. Swami. Neeraj Kulkarni has a good one. Blatant ethnic cleansing of Hindus is a recurring theme in South Asia. Be it Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh or parts of India. What can one do to prevent such future events? <clears throat> See, it's a very big question. I had uh, urged earlier that we should send 20,000 troops when the Americans had come into Afghanistan after the World Tower uh, blasting that uh, the terrorists did. They, in fact, uh, George Bush Jr. asked us, send us 20,000 troops, take all the weapons you want, free of charge. Advani said, okay. But Bajpai said, no. Iraq also, same thing. The, of course, Iraq, whether we should go that far or not, those, I'm not I, it's, but this is my neighborhood. But we, we were saying, no, no, we are, we are all sadhus, we will teach and we will start libraries <laughs> and so on. And, and uh, President uh, Trump, in fact, joked. He says, Mr. Modi spoke to me when I asked him what he could do about um, uh, uh, Afghanistan. He said, I'm going to build libraries and everyone went, ha, 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 ha. I hope Modi saw that. But the fact is that uh, where we should have, of course, Afghanistan was conquered by uh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh. And uh, when you got a chance to go, the Indians were hot favorites of the Afghans. I had been, as a commerce minister, I had been to Afghanistan. I met their then president uh, uh, who was installed by the Soviets after, after they left uh, Afghanistan. And they, he used to say the only people who the Afghanis really want is Indians because you've got music, you've got dances, you've got uh, teachers. You know. So he says, we feel that kind of kinship. And I saw it with my own eyes. But we have always in a touch me not. How many times the Americans, even in, uh, in, in, in this uh, Modi's government, 
when Nirmala Sitaram was the defense minister, the Americans came and said, uh, send some, uh, you know, send to troops and take all the weapons you want from us. She Mac said, Masters. Oh, yeah. Huh? McMaster's yeah, came, yeah. Yeah, that's right, McMaster. And she said to them, no, we have a hoary policy of our history that we never send troops to other countries. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, this is the kind of uh, lack of, I think, today also, India has a huge vacuum to fill. But it requires a mindset. Sir, to add to your point, sir, in 9-11, right after that, the U.S. entered with all guns blazing into Afghanistan and they drove out the Taliban. And this yeah. guy was stuck in Tora Bora mountains. That point of time, sir, the it was clear that over 5,000, could be plus or minus, Pakistani armed personnel were in Afghanistan. Yeah. And Musharraf wanted them out from there before the world came to know. So there was an airlift called Kunduz, K-U-N-D-U-Z, that was the place from where they were lifted. And the United States allowed them to go, sir. After that, they made another mistake. It is my country, but I have to say this. They made another mistake. They had this guy in the in the caves, but they wouldn't give the they, the, the, the top people would not give them the permission to send in commando units to flush this guy out. They said, no, 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 we'll give something for the local Sheftians to do. They have promised that they will bring him out alive. And, and they just allowed him to escape. So this was, these were all tactical errors that uh, US made. But to your point, sir, if India had gone in there, I mean, yeah. look, we speak that language. We understand. You, somebody can speak Dari, you can speak Afghani. Many of these things are basis is almost around Sanskrit, sir. 40, 50% you can pick up. In, in, in a week, you'll be able to completely understand. You can reply back in Urdu, Hindustani. It doesn't matter. They understand that too. They watch Bollywood movies. At least one yeah. thing that India does. <laughs> yeah, and songs. My God. Yes, and songs. I yes. agree. I totally agree with you. Uh, unfortunately, it's this strategic mindset we have not developed into our, into our educational uh, uh, syllabus. And then, Thank you. See, you, you, if, when you say Indians don't send troops abroad, are we not sending troops in the United Nations? Uh, Peacekeeping the, force. How many, how many of our troops uh, died in uh, uh, Bosnia? Do we uh, have we, have we yeah, told yeah, our yeah. people? We go to Africa. We go. We go everywhere. But as a, uh, like Salvation Army, you see, where you can go, you can sell your uh, movies. You can sell your teachers. You can sell your books. You, you can bring them all over to your side and you can connect them to our history of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Dr. Swami, I have to say this thing. India yeah. and Indians, I'm sorry to say this thing, guys. Many of us have blinkered thinking. We put blinkers on and say we will only look at the world through this. We will not look open this and see other way around. And, and you know, this is something that I've been trying to change through P-Gurus. I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, for saying that today... My comments, please, you can spill out all your guts. But the truth is that we have blinkered vision. Let's open those blinkers. Dr. Swami, this was one of the most fascinating corners. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. One, one point. I have been lectured. Russia has been our perpetual friend. So I say, give me an example. They say, Bangladesh. I said, Bangladesh, there was no Russia. There was only Soviet Union. And you say Soviet Union is the same as Russia, then you should say the you know, Soviet Union, a uh, part of Soviet Union was also Ukraine. Ukraine was also part of Soviet Union. So you should say Soviet Union was for us, so therefore Ukraine was also for us. So I mean, it, it, this kind of brainwashing that has been going on, is I can't believe it. Dr. Swami, did you know that the paper that was supposed to have been submitted to United Nations saying that USSR is no more the permanent member of the Security Council, instead the Russian Federation is, that paper is still missing, sir. <laughs> They're scrambling right now. <laughs> How did they become uh, successors to, uh, uh, to Soviet Union? I don't know. In fact, they, they, they should have had a fresh uh, assertion, uh, I mean, uh, evaluation as so to who should be the, uh, you know, who should replace uh, USSR. It should have been India. 
because India was offered it. We gave it to China. So now you can say, okay, this is uh, this belongs to India. 1950, we gave it to China. You know that. Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, our so document. To, to, to add to that, sir, uh, the Ukrainian ambassador to the United Nations has raised this very point that, huh. look, Russian Federation doesn't belong here. They never applied for it or some technicality to that effect. So this is still going on right now. The, the debate is raging right now in, in United Nations. So, I mean, UN resolutions are becoming a joke anyway, but you have this fundamental problem that when, see, the 15 countries that broke away from USSR, each and every one of them had to individually apply to become a yeah, member. And, 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 and to add an insult to injury, Ukraine was a member even before yeah. it became part of USSR. In the right. United Nations. That's the name right. Ukraine was there. The land may have been less or more. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah so, right. In the 1940s, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so a lot of funny things are going on. Again, my my advice to everybody, read everything, every point of view. Then you will know the truth for yourself. So thank you very much, Dr. Swami. It was always a pleasure. Today was a spe special session. We really loved your, uh, you know, storytelling history class today. And viewers, thank you very much for being such a wonderful part of this audience. We had a very high crowd today, sir. And thank you once again. And thanks for coming at such short notice. Namaskar.